Welcome to episode five of Young Strength, a Zoom series focused around young strength coaches up and coming in the industry, uh, where we are able to explore and talk about perspective and concepts related to strength and conditioning. I'm your host, Lockie, and my guest today, probably one of the guys that needs a little bit more time in the morning to get going, kind of limber up. Uh, Bryce Gis, how are you going, mate? Pretty good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a time difference. How, how are we going down there in uh, oh, South, South Carolina, is it? South Carolina, yes, sir. Yeah, there we go. I know my north and south. Um, Bryce, how about you give us a, a little bit of an introduction about who you are and uh, and what you do? Yeah, uh, so my name is Bryce Gis. I'm from Texas. I'm currently a graduate assistant at Clemson University. Um, I work with the cheer team, um, and then I assist baseball and softball, and then a little bit of track and field. Bryce and I were able to kind of link up back in the day at, at UT, and um, I think, you know, pretty much from where to go, Bryce has done some pretty great things and a pretty avid learner, so that's why we wanted to get him on the show. But um, let's uh, let's get into the questions. Uh, I guess number one, which I ask everybody, is is the why. Why did you get into the profession? Going back to eighth grade, I just kind of started working out a little bit, um, fell in love with the process, you know, looking at bodybuilding.com, just all, every little uh, piece of training advice I could find um, to get bigger, faster, stronger. Played baseball a little bit in college, but just wasn't able to stay healthy. Um, kind of goes back to my nickname that y'all gave me during the internship of Mobility Bryce. I'd say uh, due to a lack of mobility. Um, yeah, so just not being able to move, didn't really understand um, how I could prevent those kind of injuries, and I wanted to. So really just took a deep dive into all things strength and conditioning and uh, started interning at Texas Tech. I was a graduate assistant at Hardin Simmons for a year, and then interned at University of Texas, which led me to Clemson. It's been a great spread for you, and I know, um, obviously, Clemson first time out of Texas that was a big jump for you but um in terms of your coaching itself do you feel like there's a certain mindset or attitude that that you try and instill or or produce toward your athletes if I'm helping out a coach and they're a little bit harder on them then I'll try to be um, kind of the opposite of that and love them up a little bit where if uh if they need a little bit of tough love and kind of give them that so just kind of being Clint Martin at University of Texas told me sometimes you need to be a thermostat, not a thermometer. So um, kind of just trying to be that thermostat and adjusting to what they need in the moment. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's funny that you bring up Clint. I reckon we've had about two or three of the guests so far bring up Clint. So I uh, I feel like I need <laughs> to send him some royalties at, at this yeah, stage. Yeah, absolutely. Um. I mean, and, and that kind of leads on to our, our next thing is, you know, how important do you feel the role of the strength coach is in terms of the success of the individual athlete or even just the team itself? I think it can go both ways. So it can, you can either say it's extremely important, most important thing, um, which a lot of people might say that, where um, other people might say it's not super important. Um, personal thought is it's uh, a little bit more of managing and just making sure that they're not getting hurt. I don't know how much I'm going to say I'm, I have LeBron James as an athlete. I don't know how much I'm going to make him a better basketball player, but just making sure he's staying healthy throughout the season um, and has the longevity career that he has. But also you got to think parts of the year, especially with uh, college athletics, athletes are spending more time with their strength coach than they are their sport coach. So you kind of got to be the one that's, um, instilling the principles and uh, mindset that the head coach puts into place. Yeah, definitely. And when we had um, Josie on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was actually really good. We kind of talked on the topic of sports specificity, but not so much from a training side. It was it was more so that, you know, instilling the, the attitude that we want to see on the field, the attitude that we want to see from the team um, overall. Do you feel like that's sort of what, we can kind of do as a strength coach that can sometimes be a little bit neglected. Absolutely. Um, I think the standards, the standard, and you got to hold athletes to that, um, which is put in place by the head coach and then support staff kind of follows along. So it's definitely a big part of our role. 
who do you feel i mean obviously you had a great spread of, of coaches to work with do you feel like there's been uh one in particular or maybe a few that stand out as some really pivotal mentors yeah man i i don't i don't think i could put the amount of mentors on one or even two hands um but uh i think mike hansen at the university of texas really stands out he uh really taught me how to think for myself um before going into that internship, I would look at everything on Twitter, um, Instagram, and just kind of think that's that's the way to do things. But anytime I'd ask him a question, he would ask me a question, which was really frustrating at the time. Um, but it definitely helped me learn how to think through things. And that's something I try to do with interns we have now is uh, whenever they come up to me and ask a question, I try to have them think through it before just giving them the answer because odds are they'll forget the answer five minutes later. Um, but if I kind of help th think through it and uh, try to figure it out on their own, it'll set them up for success uh, down the road, which is um, definitely something that Mike really helped me out with. Yeah, he's definitely a, uh, I'd almost say a bit of a polarizing uh, personality at times. Yeah. Um, sometimes he's, he's your best friend and other days he's like, I'm going to challenge you in, in every way. Yeah. Which but is great. It, it's, that was definitely what I needed. Oh, for sure. We all needed it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think this is a great time to obviously jump into that that point of, you know, you've been at several institutions and I think you're a very observant person. I've definitely noticed that over the time that we worked together. Um, do you feel that there were similarities across the different colleges um, and different facilities that might have so sort of stood out for sure kind of going back to the standards the standard um i think uh, texas tech hardin simmons university of texas and clemson each of those places um has a good track record of success each place that the one thing that sticks out that's similar is holding the athletes coaching staff all that kind of stuff to this to the same standard um philo coaching philosophies leadership styles programming completely different at each place. But um, the one thing that kind of remained constant was the standard. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean, you know, dial it back to Clint Martin for a second. I still remember when um, the track team got second at Nationals. And I cracked a joke with Clint when he came back a couple of days later that I was going to send him a text saying, you know, congratulations, it's been a fantastic season. And in the end, I, I chose not to do that because we got second. And he said that was a good choice. Because, yeah. as you know, the standard is the standard, especially at Texas. Yeah. It's winning tradition, and if yeah. we don't win, that's that's not what we've done. Bringing back to the questions a little bit more, do you think that there was a, a a key standout trait or a key standout factor that really brought success to these organizations? You know, something that was it the staff, was it the facilities, was it an attitude that that really kind of stood out to you? I think attitude's huge. Um, athletes come in, want to be there, um, get after it, ask what they can do extra, um, even if sometimes it's not needed. But I think I think that attitude is, has been the biggest thing in each of these places where they want to be there, they want to get better, and want to win. Yeah. And I kind of want to stay on that thing of, of extra. Um, I find in Australia – a lot of especially young athletes or athletes that haven't really been exposed to a, a semi-professional or professional environment often take that as we need to train more. And it would be great to obviously get that perspective from you of, you know, sometimes more doesn't necessarily mean more training. Um, you know, do you think that there's a couple of factors of extra that you would often ask of your athletes? I think that was one thing I thought of as, as an athlete. You know, the, the more you do, the better you get, um, even if quality isn't there, just – taking 500 swings, getting in the gym for five hours a day, you know, whatever it was. I think that was my mindset um, and didn't have anyone telling me anything else. So I think that's big that we need to educate the athletes on why maybe extra isn't always better. Um, and like where, if you, if you do, are, if you are going to get extra, where you can get that extra, maybe, maybe in sleep, maybe in your nutrition, um, other areas that can really help and, provide like a synergist effect versus just going in the gym for six hours a day. Oh, exactly. And 
Um, kind of going off our set questions a little bit with this one. I, I just kind of want to stay on this because I think it's it's great because I have so many frustrating athletes here. Not really. Um, <laughs> do you, do you think you have any oh have found a way of successfully getting buy in from your athletes when that is the case? Because I know so many young athletes. It's it is they just want to get in the gym one more day. They want to get out on the field for one more hour when it's like you try and say it to them. You know, maybe we need to do a little less. Maybe we need to think about your nutrition. And it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah. Um, for me, with my programming, I, I like to include at least one athlete choice um, exercise. Maybe it's at the very end, just so that they can feel like they have a little bit of say in their training, um, whether it helps them or not. They're doing bicep curls. Um, if it keeps them away, away from the rec center or whatever it is, um, going in and getting an extra couple hours, then um i'm all for it yeah no that's awesome that's um especially as young coaches sometimes i think we can almost get a little bit walked over by our athletes so having that little bit of buy-in when we go hey maybe we just look at this today can be a yeah. you know a lifesaver especially for our careers and I, I like to kind of try to guide them as well so let's let's say i, I would like to have them do um some type of arm exercise then kind of be like, all right, here's, here's a few, here's what I would choose, but you're, you're welcome to do whatever you want. Um, just so that some athletes don't want to choose. They, they want you to tell them exactly what you want them to do. Um, and some athletes kind of want a little bit of say in their training. So I think um, for me, at least being able to include that uh, has been a big success. Yeah, that's awesome. And going back to you a little bit more, where do you feel that that you've really grown in the last few years when it's come to the profession and and I guess your your career as a whole? Yeah, I think uh, for sure leadership. Um, you know, going back to last year as a graduate assistant, um, I was at a Division three school, Hardin Simmons. So we had one full time, two GAs, which were kind of run like full times. And personally, didn't think I was anywhere ready for a full time job. So. It uh, really just threw me in the fire, and I was leading four or five teams on my own, programming leading. Um, so, yeah, it was a really good experience for me just to kind of get thrown in the fire and um, figure it out along the way. And now with my position at Clemson, it's a little bit more leading the interns. Um, so whenever they have questions or kind of need direction on what they need to be doing at a certain time, um, kind of trying to find a way to get them – to do things without making them feel like they have to do things. I mean, definitely knowing um, a couple of the guys that have obviously worked for you so far, you know, they've, they've had nothing but positive responses in that. So, you know, I think that's, that's always a bit of a testament as well when, when you're able to get that feedback, especially from someone on, on the, the outside of the organization. So, you know, you're definitely, definitely doing a good job there. It's 2023. Uh, obviously new year, new you. Any goals? Hopefully touch your toes. Maybe touch the toes. Um, I want to try to play a little more golf. So just kind of try to find a little more free time where I can get out and do some hobbies, do, do things I enjoy. Golf courses around here are gorgeous. So it's a great opportunity to play some good golf. Oh, yeah. As, as we say down here, it'd be rude not to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, let's uh, get into a little bit of rapid fire to wrap this one up. But uh I, you'll probably realize that I, I definitely have a bit of a, a personal focus uh, to my my guests when it comes to this part. But uh, number one, mobility or restoration? This is an obvious answer. Yeah, but based on the nickname y'all gave me, we got to go mobility. Yeah. Just for anyone wondering, you'd, you'd just walk into the gym and if Bryce had free time, he was acupressuring, <laughs> he'd be doing fascial <laughs> movements. That That man was doing everything just to get that upper edge. Had to. I don't know. I don't know if it really helped, but not much. Not, not much. yet. No. Nah. Your, your snatch was a, a better movement in the end. There's, <laughs> there's no cameras in Nez, so no one can really give evidence. Yeah. Um, favorite activity to do on weekends, I, other than golf, other than golf. This this fall it was definitely college football. That was that was the thing. Like every Saturday, wake up, watch college game day, veg on the couch, and just watch. Six, seven, eight hours of college football. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that. You're doing it the right way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
Hook them horns or go Tigers? You got to say go Tigers. That's a good answer. That's a safe answer. Yeah. If, if your boss watches this, you know, that was that was a test. Yeah. Um, and one that I have asked some of my guests in the past, the one place in the world you'd want to visit. I'd have to come see you in Australia. Bloody O. Mate, that's Let's that's the it. right place to be. Yeah. Obviously, uh, sure. one of one of your interns, Michael's down here as well. So mm -hmm. we're we're in the same state, you know. You get a couple yeah. of tour guides. Yeah, I gotta come see y'all for sure. Yeah. That's definitely on on the bucket list. Come come down there and spend a week with y'all. Oh man, I'm sure you'd get a a text message from the great Donny Mabe. He'd be like, "Make sure I have a flat white." Yeah, that man yeah. loves his coffee down here. <laughs> yeah, uh, y'all y'all raved about it all summer, so I'm excited oh, yeah. to try it out. I tell you what, I'm going to give a, a hidden gem for anyone that might be in Austin. Um, obviously, Australians know our coffee really well, so. If you're ever in East Austin, go to Lazarus. That is possibly the best coffee in America. So uh, that was definitely a culture shock for me when I first got off the plane and went, oh, my goodness, the coffee is terrible. So there's a saving grace. Um, if, if Americans disagree with me, you can DM me. That's fine. I'll contest it wholeheartedly. But uh, that uh, wraps up episode five of Young Street with uh, my guest, Bryce. Bryce, you've been fantastic today. I think we had some really great gems there. And um, it's always great to get different perspectives, especially uh, people from sort of contrasting places like the US. So it's obviously awesome to get that exposure, especially for, for young strength coaches sort of up and coming and maybe wanting to get an idea of the US. So thank you so much for giving the time today. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, good luck this year in 2023. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Awesome.